everyone. I'm looking this way. I guess this is the right. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're, the camera's over here again. We continue to have technical difficulties. <laughs> Our regular viewers will know what I mean when I point to this. But anyway. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to our podcast. This is, I'm Kim. And I'm Jennifer. From Fleece and Harmony, Woolen Mill in Belfast, Prince Edward Island. So welcome to everyone that uh, has been joining us week after week, yeah. or every two weeks for, this is episode eight. Yeah. So eight times now. It's the middle of March almost. We can hardly believe yeah, it. Yeah, March just flew by. Yes. Fe February was a year. Yes. And then March has been 30 seconds. It's nuts. Yeah. So welcome to everybody that's joining us again, and welcome to anybody that's new. If you're new, uh, we're sisters. We own a sheep farm in Belfast, Prince Edward Island, and we have a woolen mill where we spin the fiber from our own sheep and uh, sheep from surrounding farms as well from Prince Edward Island, and we um, we send that yarn out to the world yeah <laughs> <laughs> joyfully so here we are and an episode of the fleece and harmony podcast would not be complete without a little bit of a weather report because when you're farmers the weather is really important but actually today we have nothing really to report no nope, it's beautiful yeah it's beautiful um it was uh it's been minus 13 and then daylight savings time came and we changed our clocks and now it's plus six Right. Yeah, it's beautiful. Everything's <laughs> melting like at a really rapid pace. Yes. Yeah. So that's good. And after daylight savings time, the next uh, benchmark on the calendar is St. Patrick's Day, which is when we traditionally shear. Yep. So that's coming up this weekend. We'll be shearing um, our ewe sheep, all the ones that are going to have babies because we like them shorn before they have their, uh, you know, before they have their babies. And then a few weeks after that, it's lambing. Yeah. We're so, not sure you're going to get to see us really yeah. tired. So take a look. <laughs> yeah, this, this is, is as good as we're going to look for the next six weeks. Yeah, this is pretty much. This is pretty well rested, yeah. I would say. <laughs> but uh, in two or three weeks' time, that will deteriorate rather quickly. Yeah, and I'm going to imagine that there's probably not going to be a ton of knitting getting done. No. I don't know. So we'll basically see. for lambing, we are we go out to the barn four times a night. Right. So between 10 and 6. Yeah. Uh, we check on them every two hours right. because we don't trust our ewes to deliver their babies properly. <laughs> um, well, they deliver them, but sometimes they after walk away. That, who knows? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so sometimes they're like, oh, I'm glad that's over. Yeah. And they just trot new, off. Especially new mothers. Yeah. 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 So if they're first timers, I don't know if we have any first timers. A couple. Yeah. A couple. Yeah. So... Anyway, it's exhausting. Yeah. Who knows? What, and we've never really had to produce a podcast in the middle of that before. No. Generally, we're lucky to just kind of be up and mobile, so it yeah. should be interesting. But, of course, there'll be tons of cute photos. It all depends on how long it goes on for. Yeah. And we weren't very smart this fall. No. During breeding season. Yeah, we kind of left the rams in a little extra long. Yeah. Which means there could be late births, which means we could be going out checking, like, for an extra month. Yeah. For one or two. Yeah. Years. Really dumb. Yeah. That really dumb. dumb thing. Well, we're busy. Yeah, but worst <laughs> comes to worst, we'll just be up here like a couple blathering dunderheads and we'll just put up cute pictures of lambs. Yeah, that's right. We'll, 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 uh, we'll, it's not a bad thing. Yes, we'll yeah. just defer to the pictures of lambs. Yeah. Like we, <laughs> if we start babbling. Yeah, and there's like bad lambs. Yeah, right. <laughs> it will be kind of like this, but with lambs. Yes, exactly. <laughs> So today, uh, just to give you a rundown of what we're going to do, we're going to talk about our works in progress. We're going to talk about finished object, uh, finished object. Well, there's a whole story behind that. Yeah. Um, there's kind of a secret project that we're going to tease you about. And uh, there's a shop update for our online shop. And then we'll have our regular segment of Welcome to Our World, which has me in the back again. I hate being on camera like that. I like, not, I like not being on camera. Yeah. Well, anyway. We're going to talk about uh, spinning and plying, which is really now we're where the yarn is actually made. Like real, yeah. real yarn. You'll there, recognize yarn. Yeah, and there will point. be yarn appearing. Yeah. 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 But then you'll be back. Will I? Yeah. Yeah, I will. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It'll be my turn again. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be your turn. <laughs> so I guess without further ado, we'll get to uh, the finished object that we have to show, which is my beautiful yes. water shawl. Yes. I'm so pleased with this project. Good. I love it. Good. I especially love this Pico Edge. Yeah, it's beautiful. Good right. job on the blocking. Right. Yeah. Right. So we blocked, uh, the pattern says block aggressively, and I did. And the reason why you have to block aggressively is because, as you will recall, will recall 
Uh, these sections are uh, of waves are made with short rows and short rows naturally give kind of a little extra texture to the to the fabric but um, it's lit at knit at quite a loose gauge so it's easily blocked if you do an aggressive uh, an aggressive block I'll just take it off and show the size of it yeah. and the shape because it's actually a triangle it's not a crescent yeah. it's like the waiting for rain yeah, yeah. I love the I fact you can see this yeah, I love the fact that it's a good, generous... I could have actually even stretched it out a bit more. Hmm. So, But I will say, if anybody's planning to do this uh, project, the limiting factor mm -hmm. is the edge that you do here on the this edge because it can get quite tight. As you're increasing. As you're yeah. increasing. It can get quite tight, and you want to have a little bit of uh, play in that edge so that you can get a nice, uh, a nice shape to the, the shawl. It's really kind of stretched to the limit, when, mm -hmm. the way that I blocked it. And uh, um, this Pico, I just, at first I thought it was going to take me forever, but you do yeah, kind of get fast. this. It goes fast because it takes up uh, three stitches from the uh, bind off edge um, at a time to make each of these little, uh, little edges. And uh, I'm kind of toying with the idea. I have a yarn left. I'm toying with putting a tassel on the end, yeah. on each end. And I think I might do that because I don't necessarily want to wear... Um, a shawl pin with this mm -hmm. and I think the tassel would just give it a little It'll extra weight, it. weight. Yeah. yeah over your shoulder over my shoulder it's beautiful yeah it's this is the way. color November sky and Alden lace right and the Alden lace yarn is really a joy to work with I have to say yeah it has yes. a really nice feeling we're both working with it right now yeah it's one a... one finished thing and one unfinished thing <laughs> we'll get to that in a second <laughs> So I don't really think there's much more to say about this. It was a great project. We've talked about it now for a few episodes. Um, the the lace sections, and then with the break with the garter, like there's lots of garter there to just for TV watching, and then lace for concentration. I think I have mohair in my eye. If anyone's oh. wondering. Yeah, the lace is 30 percent mohair and thirty percent uh, lamb's wool. So. Yeah, I've been sitting next to it too much. Yeah. So it's beautiful. Yeah, I'm really pleased. Yeah, and it's one skein. Two skates? Two skates. Two skates. Two of skates, Elton lace. but there's leftover. So yeah. that's where I think I'm going to do the uh, the tassel. Yeah. I, I like the tassel. And you could even add rows to it too if you wanted the final garter section, make it bigger. Oh, yeah. You yeah. could you could have. I I stopped because at some point I had to have a finished off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, <laughs> no, yeah. And but the and the bind off does use quite a bit of yarn. Too, yes, so you have to be but, careful. Yeah, you need to be careful because that is eats all yarn like crazy. Yeah, that bind all off. the good bind offs do. Yes. Yeah, yeah. they're yarn eaters. Yeah. as they say. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, good. I'm really happy. Looks beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, and d we did say the colors November sky, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So my, I mean, everybody, I hope wanted to see the finished Ramia. I definitely want to see the finished Ramia. Nobody wanted to see the finished Ramia more than me. <laughs> However, I made a choice to go to a benefit concert Saturday night, and pretty much that's what it came down to. And uh, thus, I was not being going to be able to finish it. But it was for a really good cause. Yes. So we have a group here, a watershed group. And it's really cute because they're called Bog. <laughs> we watershed like Bog. Yeah. And uh, it's B-A-W-G, though. So right. it's the Belfast Area Watershed Group. Yeah. And they are a bright group of uh, great community-minded people. Yes. Yeah. And so they did the most amazing benefit concert for their group to raise money for their spring and summer projects, which yeah. we're really excited to see what they get up to. Yeah. And there were some amazing musical acts. We can't believe the talent here in Belfast. Yeah. And uh, crazy, our, actually, yeah, but... our school here, Belfast Consolidated, is well known for their um, wonderful history of music teachers that they've right. had just in our public, like public school teachers. And yeah. they've spawned all kinds of uh, talented musicians, like yeah. really talented. Yeah. Um, and one of them is going to be playing here, um, or a couple of them are going to be playing here next weekend, yeah. which will be tomorrow for you guys, yeah. the Amanda Jackson Trio. So they're yeah. from the Belfast, well, Amanda's from Surrey, but Todd yeah. McLean in that group is from yeah. Belfast area. Yeah. And he's actually a music teacher. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. himself now. So anyway, lots of talent around here, and uh, the big headliners were the Paper Lions, and they're a really fun group, and they've toured all over the world, yeah. but they're from here. Right. And, they've been uh, together a long time. Yeah, a long time, since they were kids. Yeah. And uh, they're just hilarious, and they put on a great show, and it's always such a joy to get Very to see them. Very relaxed and, yeah. and humble, and yeah. it was really, really, really funny, because they played a song that they wrote when they were, like, teenage yeah. boys. Like yeah. That. 
And one of them suggested that they do it, and the other two were like, <laughs> like this. And he was like, yeah, come on, it'll be fun. <laughs> and it was hilarious. So what they did in the song was they managed to rhyme the word feta, which was feet, with pita. Yeah. So you can imagine how the rest, and there was like some Spanish words in there. Yeah. They but thought... they didn't speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just a typical maritime humility and sense of humor. But yeah. uh, they're it such was, a joy. It was, yeah, it was really like, the whole crowd was like, if you weren't really listening to the words, it could have been like a okay. top. <laughs> board. Yeah. So With a uh, yeah, they're called the Paper Lines, and they're actually on Spotify, and I'm sure they're on Apple Music as well. So if yeah. you want to listen to a few of them, their songs, they they're actually quite popular. Yeah, they re they really yeah. have played all over the world. Yeah, like, yeah. It, so it's amazing. It's even more amazing that they would play that that song. Like yeah, that song. And, yeah, just like, so humble and yeah. very talented. Yeah. yeah. So that was that's my excuse for this week. Yeah. So anyway, so but I'm almost done and I didn't want to like, I was, I considered stitching it together and then wearing it today without the eye cord trims done and things, but that wasn't, wouldn't, wouldn't be fair to Jennifer's pattern to do that. So I'm going to wait for the big reveal. Um, so all I have left to do, so there's also like a mental capacity issue with this because <laughs> the last step is 184 stitches of Kitchener stitch. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to graph the two sides together. And I don't think I need to tell anyone who knits that you need to be in the right frame of mind to tackle that. <laughs> so I've sort of also just waited until, I'm probably going to do it this afternoon. That's the sad thing. But then yeah. I still have the, the eye port and things to do. And I did one little struggle I had um, and a little tip. I had some trouble getting my provisional cast on on the needle. So in the pattern, Jen recommends doing the provisional cast on onto a needle, but I didn't have a, a needle cord that I was comfortable doing that with. So I was using a knit pick size needle and uh, their cords are quite stiff. So I didn't feel comfortable doing the type of provisional cast on where you put the stitches right on. Oh, you use the okay. needle cord as your okay. provisional cast on almost. Okay. And uh, it was just a disaster. So I decided to do the traditional crochet provisional cast on. But you really need to be careful about what yarn you pick mm -hmm. for your crochet. Yes, that's a really good point. Gosh. Yeah. Use gentle floss or something waxed. I don't yeah. know what to tell you, but it was all bound up. And uh, it was also purple. Like, how dumb can you be? <laughs> Why? And so I actually had going to the bit kind of, of mistake that you only make <laughs> once. Uh, most likely. Yeah. <laughs> so I ended up kind of making a bit of a mess that I had to clean up and then you have to fix the mount of all the stitches and it's just a bit of an under undertaking. So the final step is a pretty big significant one and uh, I'm actually hoping to do it this afternoon maybe but I'm kind of like I have a little bit of anxiety about it. Oh, don't have anxiety. It's really important. I, I know it's really important but Okay. There's a couple different options for fixing it, I think. I'm going to do it. I feel like this yeah. is where some people would just give up and then this would go in the trunk for five years. That's kind of how I feel. Oh, no. Okay, I'm going to do it. Poor Jennifer's watching this thinking, oh my God, is she ever going to finish that sweater? <laughs> I, I really am, but I just need to be in the right state of mind. You've done such a beautiful job on it and it's absolutely Listen, stunning. I can't wait to wear this thing. Yeah. It's, trust me. Anyway. This fits perfectly. I think it will. Yeah. So, so close, but I made a couple of decisions. It was really important for us to go to that. Like, that was a, a whole evening. Well, and even then, you would have had it finished if yeah. you didn't run into some issues with the provisional cast on. Probably I would have had it sewn together, but then yeah. also last night was knit night, so I yeah. definitely wasn't going to oh, do yeah. it last night either. So I lost a couple evenings. I, I worked diligently at it. I really did. This is a ton of stockinette, and it's knit mm -hmm. in the flat, so it's a ton of pearl. Yeah. Um, and so just, you know, life and whatever. So yeah. anyway, I'm going to say this one more time. It will definitely be ready by next week. <laughs> it's the third time now I've said that. All right. So that's Ramya. And uh, oh, very exciting because I think she posted about it on Instagram. So I think we can say that Jennifer has gotten a little shipment of Eldon Lace. Yes. I feel like she intends on possibly doing something really exciting with it. So if you're not following Jennifer Beal on Instagram, then you must. Yes. And she has every color of Elden Lace that's available in her little hands right now. And we're just waiting to see what she's going to do with it. Yes. And it's sure to be exciting. So that's Elden Lace for everyone. Yes. Um, so then my other whip is my sock, which I ripped out because if you recall. So knit night was rip night for Jennifer. Yeah. Whip and rip. That's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> I am not like I love having knit night. There were brownies. I can't knit at knit night though. 
No. Well, I'm never on a project where... Anyway, so I ripped this all out. That was useful. And I kind of managed to get myself back on track, even though that you was no easy thing. You did figure out the way how you, how you didn't notice you were beating yourself yeah, up a little bit I was. in the last episode about the fact you didn't notice yeah, the garter. Yeah, because actually you couldn't see it on this side. Yeah. It was practically imperceptible until you flipped it inside out. So yeah. I'm not quite as stunned as I thought. <laughs> But I am going to try not to make the same mistake again here. So the good news was I only had to go back for just a little bit of the gusset. I didn't have to go back to the heel flap or anything. It's yeah. kind of what was hard to tell with the sock because everything is like moving at an angle. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm now, I, and I, I did manage to finish all my gusset decreasing oh, okay. between last night and oh, this wow. morning. Okay. So I'm just knit, knitting the foot. Yeah. And it did give me a chance. I decided to go down a size in the foot. Oh, with, I okay. have the skinniest, awfulest They're feet really ever. Thin. They're yes. like cross country skis. <laughs> <laughs> I would never show them on camera. That's how bad you they are. You know that you're going to have to do that now. Right. What? <laughs> you're going to have to be a thick wool sock to try to fatten them up a bit. I have the weirdest feet. So I'm going to knit, but why knit extra? If you have cross-country ski with feet, you might as well knit to them, right? Right. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. So my plans, upcoming plans are to finish this pair of socks because I really need them. Well, you really got fur since last night. Yeah. Well, it's nothing now. It's 52 stitches around. Yeah. It's just like whip 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 yeah. and uh, I'm using these very cool needles which we're going to show you later yeah talk about them because they're really a life changer it's unbelievable yeah, yeah. these cute little look at the we'll uh, talk about them later yeah we'll talk about them later so that'll make it go fast so finish the socks back to my mittens because I am doing the roses are red mittens we've probably all forgotten about them by now which ends March 31st the middle one March right? 30th March yes. 30th. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's lots of people have finished their mittens. I know, and they just look beautiful, and I really mm -hmm. want to get back to them, but I've been trying to finish the sweater. So this mittens, Steven's sweater, and then Jennifer's next pattern um, that I've already got my eye on that I'm going to do, and that's my cue right now. Okay. Yeah. I think I've covered everything about this. Yeah. Sock. <laughs> That's even smaller than it was last time. So, and you have a whip. Yes, because I also ripped out. If you yeah. remember, whip rip. <laughs> you remember <laughs> my Tron Time mittens that I had started, and then I uh, I ripped them out because I I actually was just a, really at the end. I had ten rows left to do of the of the first yes. one. Well, my sock was done, so I guess yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so then, and then I ripped because I wasn't happy. And just as a little recap, I ripped because I could see the improvement in my color work and everything. When I got to the end, they weren't, they were a little bit too tight, I felt. And, uh, the improvement that I saw, I thought when I go to do the second one, it's going to be so much better than the first one that I, it's not even going to look like a pair anymore. So I ripped them all out and I did start them. I mentioned uh, that I had a, an issue with the Latvian braid. This is the first time that I've done a Latvian braid. And I mentioned that I had an issue with that, that I wasn't really happy with it the last time. I thought it was my tension, but I actually figured it out with this. Oh. It's actually the jog that's created when you go around. So what I did was I saved a little bit of the um, the tail of where I joined this pale color. Um, I joined, joined uh, did a little bit of stitchery work to make the join a little bit better. It's still not perfect, but it doesn't look like, it's hardly noticeable. Mm -hmm. And then when I block them, it'll be it'll be even better. And um, I moved up, I, I had done a gauge swatch, but I didn't do the gauge swatch in color work. So I was too tight. I went down a needle size because I thought I had to do it, go down a needle size, it turns out, I didn't need to go down a needle size, so now I'm using this needle size that the pattern recommends, and I'm much happier with the fabric, the feel mm -hmm. of the fabric as well. It really allows the the yarn to have a little bit of it's like nice and more does it grow in the handle? Yeah. yeah, it's more lofty, and uh, I'm really pleased. And they're going really fast because I just cast these on last night. Hmm. She did. You did work on those during knit night. She yes. did a Latvian braid during knit night. Yeah. I don't have that kind of. I don't know what I'm doing on knit night, but it's not going to be a Latvian. I braid. waited till after I finished the Latvian braid to have my brownie. Ah, uh, Rachel, thank you again. For the brownie. Yes. And we had a carrot cake. Yes. So it's, another another. Uh, we're going to need to get some more people out to knit night, cake. or we're all going to be like yes. <laughs> having to eat all these sweets ourselves. Yeah. Poor us. Yeah. <laughs> It's a hardship. <laughs> it's a hardship. Oh, Somebody's got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so here we are, Tron Time, take two 
I'm really happy with it actually. I feel like the feel of the fabric. Um, I also, I got a hint from one of our uh, participants in the Cal who actually does her floats on the back. Uh, she, she puts it so that the floats are running along the outside of the color work. And I thought, well, I'm gonna look that up. So I did look that up and that's what I'm doing as well. And it's really, uh, it's like magic. I don't understand really, what you mean. You turn the mitten inside out. Oh, okay. Like this. Ah, because that would keep it from getting tight. And then you knit, knit. I don't know if you can see that. So I turned it. Yeah, they can see it's inside out. Inside <laughs> out of, on the needle. And then you just knit in the inside. Right. And your float goes along the outside. And it just gives you that little bit of extra looseness yeah. on the float. And it works like a charm. And I thought it might be hard to get your head, but you don't have to get your head around it. There's nothing you're just to it. You're just going in the same direction. It. Yeah. But some things are, you like you really have to smack yourself in the head and say, well, yes, why didn't I think of that? Yeah. So, well, now we've told you, so you yeah. don't have to think about it. That's great. And I'm also using these Chiagu um, mini needles. Shorties, they're called. So I'm using the Chiagu uh, needles that are tiny little needles. Can see the size of them these are the metal ones so before i was using the fixed uh the fixed uh cable ones but chiago actually makes ne little needles that are uh, in really fine sizes on the interchangeable cords so i'm using those and i don't know if we've talked about chiago needles before but they they um are metal but somehow they're not quite as slick as the yeah, pro I think you nickel ones so this is, it's been really good. I always knit on metal needles and the other fixed cable ones that we had were bamboo, which were really nice. But our yarn is sticky enough that uh, I actually prefer it on uh, on metal. Um, I'm just gonna show the, the package. And um, somebody said, oh, what is that? A little change purse that you have? I said, <laughs> I said no. It's actually the needle, this is the case. There's the, a few missing in ours. <laughs> yes, because we have them in our project. Yes. But, um, oh, and a little bit of Smokey Smith, my cat. So oh, good. Fur. <laughs> so you have, um, the sizes go from uh, zero, if you're using US sizes, to uh, three. So that is uh, two millimeters to 3.25 millimeters. And you have um, the size, uh, the really short ones, I think they're two inches. Teeny. Teeny. And, uh, the, then you have the the three inch ones as well, and at first that seems kind of redundant. Not okay. <laughs> it seems kind of crazy short, but they're yeah. Actually so fine. these are really short, crazy short. But I just had something brilliant happen this morning as I was uh, doing my my mitten. Is that you'll notice I have I'm using size two point two five millimeter, and okay. you'll notice that there's only one of each here because the bulk of my mitten ah. was making the short cable just a little bit too tight. Yeah. Were, I was afraid I was gonna lose the stitch on the, on the cable. So what I did was I replaced the needle. I, I'm a continental knitter. I replaced the needle that I put my hand on with the long mm -hmm. one and kept the short one on the side where I'm picking my, my stitches from and it's made the perfect length. So yeah. And it is important because you want to be able to knit around easily, but you don't want your stuff to feel like it's sliding off either. Yeah. So the, the, it comes down to kind of almost millimeters. Like, so you, it's great to be able to adjust it like that because right. a little bit too long is, a, is too long. Yeah. And a little bit too short is too short. Right. So that's actually brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. So now I got another, uh, I got another inch on yeah. the... Perfect. Um, so that made it uh, made it workable. And if they get bulkier after I get up to the mitten part, like the pant yeah. part, I'll just put the other long one on. Yeah, and they come with several size cables too, so you can yeah. adjust it that way. I think you have a little bit of a longer. Yeah, but it was no, hard to pick. a longer cable. Yeah, I, it's so fine. It's unbelievable, and the precision of the way that these are made. Yeah, is. Uh, and so the, we were really excited to get these, and they also come with end stoppers, all kinds of pins, um, extenders so that you can put the cables together. Um, yeah. and, uh, it's a T pin to tighten it and there's a needle gauge that comes with. So we're putting these online. I think we only have four sets Yeah, and they're a little um, bit of an investment, but if you're knitting yeah. a lot of small, um, circum circumference projects, I can tell you that it's increased my speed 
um, knitting oh, substantially yeah. because I'm not messing around with you know need extra cord magic loop and I, I don't really want to knit anymore with double pointed needles because when I knit with double pointed needles I get ladders personally so this I think I would too I haven't even attempted it but yeah yeah no stretching like no. it's just the you make it the perfect size I yeah. think that's so brilliant about the different tips yeah and uh, it's got a little thing here you can attach it right to your project bag so yeah. they're just adorable yeah Okay, so we just ran and got the pack just so that we could show you exactly how they come. So they're called Twist Shorties, and uh, we're going to put them up online this week, and I think we only have four sets of them, Yeah. Um, and we have them up for $140 yeah. Canadian. So it is a bit of investment, but if it's something that you would use a lot, yeah. um, it's totally worth your time just to make mm -hmm. a more efficient way of knitting. Yeah. Yeah. And if you have other Chiago needles, they also, Chiago also makes... Um, an adapter so that you can adapt from the uh, the small these small ones to the next size, which is the sorry these are these the needles itself. It's a twist shorties pack, but the needles themselves are coated as minis. So you can make an adapter from the mini to the small, which would be the finer of the regular lace tips, and uh, so you're able to use the, use these with other cords and things like that as well. And they have and their their joins are just so precision mm -hmm. tight that it's uh it's they're easy to knit with. You don't get the yeah. Cut so, so that's a new new thing that we have online. Yeah. So and we are loving using them. Yeah. Okay. Good. One of the things that we love about owning a mill is that if somebody asks us, can we do something, or we sometimes get calls about, you know, special projects that people want to do, and since we own the mill, we can do what we yeah, want. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. So, we got this call, it was actually more than a year ago, from a designer uh, from Montreal, a knitwear, she designs other things, but she was doing a knitwear collection. And she asked uh, asked if uh, she would be able to use our yarn to do sweaters. So she um, she was trying to source locally. So she was having trouble finding um, wool yarn at the right uh, quality that she wanted. And so she was just phoning people and trying to find out like if if she could source the the yarns and so forth. And I sent her a couple samples of uh, different yarns that we make. But we weren't able at that time to make a yarn that was fine enough for what she wanted to do for the sweaters that she's she's doing. But she had purchased quite a lot of a lot of yarn, and um, then she phoned what three weeks ago, three or four weeks ago, probably four now. Yeah, four times flying, four <laughs> weeks ago, and uh, she uh, asked. For a, she made a gave us a commission for uh, some yarns for a project that she's gonna do, but little did we know she'd actually use the yarn that she purchased before doing some uh, accessories for her line. Yeah. So you can go check it out. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure uh, she's uh, um, sent us the pictures to be able to show. That's why we're not giving away anything when we're showing these right. pictures. But uh, I'm not sure when these products will be up on their, her uh, website, but she, uh, you've got a sneak peek of her next collection yeah. of uh, hats. It's toques, actually, and they're knit with our, our wool, so we're really excited. Yeah, and uh, it's called Swen. Yes. Yes. S-W-E-N-N. -N. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, we'll put all the links to, or we'll put the link to her um, site in the show notes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so and you can go now, check her out. And now she's, uh, now she's asked us about something else. Oh, yeah. Great. Yeah, it's so fun. <laughs> yeah. It's nice to kind of, like, we love making our own stuff, but it's nice to, first of all, get to collaborate with other creative people, and it gives us something a little bit out of the ordinary to work on, and it's, yeah. um, what she ordered from us was really cool, and it made the mill all bright colors, and like, yeah. we usually do everything white, and her stuff yeah. um, was something different, so yeah. it was just neat the way it all looked. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So yeah, it's, it was really, it's really cool, and we're happy, uh, she's really, um, you know, asked a lot of questions about the way we raise our animals and things like that. So we're really uh, happy to be working with somebody that's so uh, conscious of um, yeah, and how she's, she's sourcing. She sells full, I think they're unisex sweaters and everything. So yeah. you can purchase really high quality, well-sourced knitwear from yeah. her. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So check that out. Yes. All right, cool. So that's the fun secret custom spinning project that we've yeah. been working on it in between doing our own stuff. Right. And there's a couple other things that we wanted to let you know that we're putting up this week. So this is one, this is called Red Current Wine. 
This color's been out of stock for quite a few months now because it's actually a black lamb's wool with an over dye. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't make, just like I said, we usually spin everything white um, just because we could turn it into anything. But yeah. I did take the time to make this one. So this is back in stock now and it's from our hearth collection, which was from last fall. We launched it. Um, and it was really focusing on the beauty of natural color to fleeces, different the variety of colors. So this is 100% lamb's wool. And uh, it was one black lamb's fleece that we had from our own farm, and I've over dyed it this red currant wine color, yeah. and it's quite beautiful. And uh, Ash, you can't, it's really hard to get that kind of color if you're not using a dark background. Yeah, yeah, it's really got a lot of depth to yes. it. And uh, there's a perfect pattern for with this that Ash did uh, last fall as well. So, so we'll put a link to that, and that would be the perfect thing to make with mm -hmm. this. A really cute little hat. Right. right. Yeah. So that's back in. And then for fun, we did some DK weight yarn mm -hmm. in a couple colors. And it just turned out so gorgeous. We were just gonna put it in the store and wait for somebody to come by in the summertime, but we wanted to show it to you guys in case somebody is interested in it. And I think there are eight skeins of this Fox mm -hmm. and Kits and seven skeins of Pumpkin Patch. Yeah. And these are 250 yards? Yeah, and 100 grams. For 100 grams. Three so ply. It's, is it, oh, three ply, it's beautiful. Is yeah. it like a DK then? Yeah. Would that be what? Okay. DK. So there's enough kind of for a sweater quantity for two yeah. people, maybe just a pin. third, if you wanted yeah. to combine the two colors. And it just so happens that the fleeces we had that we made this with had the most beautiful luster mm -hmm. uh, and it turned out really spectacular. So this is not something we normally carry. I usually only carry pumpkin patch and fox and kits in our worsted and air and weights. Right. So this is a lighter weight. It's perfect sweater weight, yeah. I think. And uh, so we'll put these up. They'll be up um, probably under the Aaron listing, but on the drop down. You're right. And I will link directly to them in the show notes so that you don't have to try to figure that out. But right. you'll pick DK from the drop down basically yeah. to get them. And it's amazing um, because if you wanted to do a low contrast color work project, it would be amazing. Yeah, there's I think all kinds of Jen Stein gas patterns that would be amazing <laughs> with this. It's very hard for us to sell this stuff sometimes. Yeah. Just right. so you know, mm -hmm. I'm just sitting here thinking like we should probably make this all the time. Yeah. It's beautiful. It actually was a pleasure to make as well. I yeah. And I, I don't look good in orange, but if you do, yeah, this is a, a really nice opportunity to get something really special. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So are now we going out to see you at the spinner? Yes. Yeah. So I'll be back. <laughs> Hi everyone, we're back uh, to talk about spinning. So here we are, that now things are gonna start to actually look like yarn. So today I'm actually spinning a uh, batch of alpaca, which is a very fine uh, roving. So if, as you recall, coming out of the draw frame, you had these strips of fiber that have been lined up. And uh, these cans we put behind the spinner and then we drape it over this uh, this bar here and then we put it to the front where I'm, we're going to show you next and you'll see how we set up the machine. Okay, so after the roving has been draped over the back of the machine, it comes down into this assembly here where the drafting takes place. So that's just stretching the fibers uh, out so that um, they slide past one another and it makes a thinner um, stream of fiber, even <laughs> even more thin than it was before. Um, unfortunately, this is a little bit difficult to see because it's a dark brown. We'll intersperse some, uh, some shots of white fiber being processed so you'll have a clearer view of it. Um, there's three uh, sets of rollers that work on the fiber and they're, they're spreading the uh, roving out as they go and thinning it out. Um, you always have to have a string of some kind that's been started on the bobbin before you start uh, you start spinning you wrap the new fiber here around the old fiber that's on the bobbin which I've already done in this case and you hold the fiber up like this I'm gonna start the machine so I can't talk because it's kind of loud and you'll just see how uh, how this works <laughs> Okay. 
so I'm just going to show you an example of some brown sheep's wool that I spun earlier. Uh, so it's a little bit thicker. You're going to be able to see what it looks like. So what's happening here is that um, the threads are coming down here. They're being put on these bobbins and wrapped around. And now, now the uh, plies are quite, quite strong because the fibers have been twisted on themselves. So it has a lot of strength. I have to pull quite hard to break it apart. And um, what we're gonna do next is we'll take all of these bobbins and we'll put them on the back of the plier and when we ply, that's where you put two or three strands together to make a yarn, like a two ply or a three ply yarn. You can do four all the way up to whatever you, you want. So we'll show you that next. So now we're at the plier, which looks almost exactly like the spinner because it is, except that it has this uh, assembly on the top here. So we're putting three bobbins together and you see the three strands of fiber that are coming down here. This will make a three ply yarn and this machine spins the bobbins in the opposite direction of the spinner. So you're spinning in one direction and you're plying in the, the opposite direction. We put the three strands together. It, they spin together naturally actually to make a ply and then we attach it to an empty, uh, an empty bobbin and we're just going to start the machine and you'll see what you'll see here is a little triangle of uh, fiber coming down here joining together creating the spiral that you'll recognize in a in a yarn so we'll just start the machine and watch that go So then that's it. I'll just take this off so you can see what we're making. Okay, so what we have going on our spindle is uh, the yarn, which is a three ply, 100% alpaca yarn. Isn't that great? Yeah, a lot about <laughs> spinning. Yeah, spinning. it's really fun to see something yarn appearing. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's exciting for us when it happens in real life too. Yes. Or yeah. When it's going smoothly, it's even more fun. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's always the thing. Yes, it is. But it's really, uh, you know, it's an amazing process. Yeah. Yarn making. And uh, I think we're, we're almost to the end of the, the process. There's a couple more steps, if you can believe it. So the people <laughs> that have been following along, you must uh, realize by now that, uh, you know, there's a lot that has to, to happen between the sheep that you see grazing out in the field and the sweater that you're wearing or the shawl that you're wearing and uh it's uh but it's very it's very satisfying to yeah uh, to do and that. speaking of slow fashion yeah you wanted to mention something that you watched on netflix this yeah. week was it on no, netflix it, no, no it's uh it was on um cbc which is our public broadcaster yeah. here in canada but you can stream it um online and it was a, a documentary called um, Fashion's Dirty Secret. And it was uh, part of the series that uh, CBC does that's The Passionate Eye. And I think that they get a lot of the documentaries from the BBC. Yeah. Because it's a, it's a, uh, someone with an English accent. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, I think that's right. Commentating yeah. on it. Did you watch it? No. Oh, okay. But I do know that they, they get stuff, international yes. content. Yeah. Yeah. And it was actually, um, I'm so happy that I'm a knitter yeah. and making things that have, um, you know, have a lifespan because I don't wear a lot of fast fashion. I was never, I was just never part of that whole into thing. Quantity, yeah. Into quantity. Into quantity. If, you, really... if you've ever seen an 1850s closet, yes, which is what we have in our yeah. house, yeah. you would have an appreciation for why we don't do fast yeah. fashion. But even, uh, even when, uh, when I had like, and when I was working in the corporate world, I didn't have a, I had, I had a lot of clothes. I'm not going to say that I didn't have a lot of clothes because I had a lot of clothes, but all of the, I never wore something for just one season. Yeah. I tended to buy more classic and um, clo clothing that was made investment with natural pieces investment yeah. pieces and then built on that. Yeah. So over time I had a lot of clothes. Yeah. And the best kind of investment piece is something made with natural wool that you've made yourself. Yeah. I, I wore mean, a lot of wool, like wool suits and things yeah. like that. And thin wool and thicker wool for winter. And uh, the, the, back to this uh, documentary, it's really about um, the impact that fast fashion has had on sustainability of the different products that, that it's made out of. And they talk about cotton, but um, I, I 
think that there, it was pretty credible because they weren't saying at the end of it that you need to boycott something. They just said, just be mindful when you're shopping mm -hmm. uh, what you're buying and, and how long it's going to last and is it something that's repairable if, so, if it starts to wear out mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. And, and um, they actually did quite a... The only... Uh, big company that would speak to them on camera was a guy from Levi's. Hmm. So they're working on uh, a kind of an interesting project on, uh, on because denim. I mean, there's so many jeans out there. Yeah, people do tend to wear it within an inch of its life, though, don't they? Yeah, they do. But even so, yeah. So it's even more ironic that he'd be the one that we're right. talking about. <laughs> about how they're changing the way that they, they manufacture things. So uh, anyway, like I said, I think it was credible because they weren't being like over the top about, yeah. about it. It's, um, I, I was shocked. I was absolutely shocked. Yeah, but it's great validation for knitters. Yeah, is why we're bringing it up. Yes. Yeah. So, so if you <laughs> you need not feel bad about your habit no. or your stash. No, <laughs> and you know there's uh, lots of it. Luckily, with all the fiber shed groups and everything that are coming out, it's easier and easier to um, really understand the provenance of what you're buying as well. So yeah, uh, it's. Uh, yeah, I think it's an exciting time. And Me Made May is coming up in a couple months, and that's a big Instagram campaign right. where everybody um, shows off their Me Made wardrobes, and they spend May yeah. making things that are Me Made. Yeah. And uh, so you might want to follow that hashtag for this year and yeah. just kind of get into it. It's pretty cool. People are yeah. making their own swimsuits, underwear, bras. Yeah, you know, I know. It's, it's amazing. And it, it's funny how it changes your whole mindset, because I was like, where do you buy an underwire for a bra? And they're like, you get it from your old bra. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's recycled. That's so yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, you don't even have to buy the parts. Yeah. <laughs> you can even reuse the gear, the and rigging. If you, uh, <laughs> if you um, subscribe to Blueprint, which was yeah. the old Craftsy, I mean, they've got courses on all of that as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah, and when Ash was here last summer, um, they were wearing a pair of jeans that were made at a sewing class you know, yeah. done in Winnipeg and they fit amazingly. Yeah. It was amazing. Like yeah. what could be better? Right. Make your own jeans. They fit perfectly. Yeah. Of course yeah. they did. They yeah. were wonderful. Yeah. So that was kind of cool too. Yeah. So anyway, that's a, uh, it's, it's worth a watch if you can, uh, if you can, uh, get it well you should be able to get it because we can just live stream it so. yeah i can probably even put a link to it i can yeah. see if i can find okay. a direct link for already yeah all right and cool. it's just uh it's just uh like i said i was so uh, happy that i was a knitter and making things and i haven't sewn for a long time but i used to sew my own clothes as well at one time but yeah yeah well we sewed these chair covers yes we did yeah yeah <laughs> we sew occasionally <laughs> yeah. when necessary we yeah. just don't have a place to keep the sewing machine set up Yes. I think it really helps to have it set up all the time. Like a station. Yeah. yeah. And I have mine out in my hallway now, and I do have to run an extension cord, but at least it's there, and I was able to sew my, reinforce my steaks using it, and a right. sewing machine is a great thing. Yes, it to is. To dig out, and you know, it's fun. We don't have a ton of time for that kind of stuff, yeah. but I would love to make some stuff. Maybe I'll yeah. plan on making now, something this May. Yeah, the styles that people are, the clothes that they're making are very comfortable and fairly yeah. easy, like straightforward yeah. to, uh, to make. and. I mean, a, a skirt, like a simple skirt, is mm -hmm. uh, pretty pretty straightforward as well. So Yeah, it's a big yeah. movement. I yeah. think it's really it's exciting. Great. It's yeah. cool. It's a feel-good kind of thing. Yes, it yeah. is. All right, well, we should go. And thank you to everyone for watching and all the thumbs up and, and comments that we get. Uh, we're just loving it. Yeah, and we would love it if you would take a minute to like this video and subscribe to our channel because it does help us get seen by other people so that we can justify it keeps investing the time in the podcast. Spread so. the joy. Yeah, and you guys have been doing a great job so far with that. Yeah, so great. thank you again. Okay, Okay, thanks. bye everyone. Bye.